City of Lawrence Common Council. This is a zoning hearing for case number 2019-ZON-077. Uh, just a matter of housekeeping, if you have not done so already, please sign in on the sheet in the back if you intend to come forward and speak. So I'll give everybody a second to do that if you haven't done so already. If you intend to testify and you're just coming in, please sign the white sheet in the back. Okay, so all who intend to testify or believe that they may testify should stand and be sworn by the clerk. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the, testi the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You see it. Thank you. The petitioner has 15 minutes to present his case. Thank you, President Chavis, members of the council, David Kingen. Uh, I'm an urban planner in Indianapolis with offices at 618 East Market Street, and I'm here before you this evening on 2019 ZON077, property located at 5104 North Franklin Road. Uh, representing Ruby and Pearl Property, LLC, the uh, present owner of the retail center. And uh, it is a 5.12 acre tract. Many of you are probably familiar with the property. It's uh, on, formerly had the, an occupant as the uh, Mars Food Store. It does have retail um, stores that are a part of the retail center to the north of where the farm, or where the Mars um, food store was, and we're here this evening seeking a rezoning, and we feel like that this rezoning is a very slight modification of the rezoning of the property at present. At present, the property is zone C3, neighborhood commercial, and neighborhood commercial allows for a laundry list of uses, and we have given you a handout. One of the three handouts that we gave you permitted uses in the C3 district. You may want to review that and look through that, but you can see those are the uses that are presently used and available to this site at the present. This rezoning is a rezone from C3 to CS, commercial special. And the CS district is one of the unique districts in Indianapolis under the zoning ordinance in, in that you do not go to the zoning ordinance to read what the uses are that are permitted you actually identify the uses. The petitioner submits on his petition uh, the uh, uses that they want to have on this property. And what we have done is we've said we want a um, wholesale facility uh, to be located in the space that was the former Marsh store, and we'll describe that in a, in a few moments. And the also remaining on the available for the property will be the remainder of C3 uses with exclusions. So that's why we feel that this is an actual down zone of the property because it's actually being more, certainly it has the um, use of the wholesaling as a, a new use that would not be permitted in C3, but it describes all the C3 uses that, and the uses, the handout that we gave you, provides you the list of the uses that we're saying would be excluded if this rezoning is approved um, this evening. <coughs> We want to make clear that this use, although described by the zoning ordinance as wholesaling, we think it's a lot like Sam's Club or Costco or even what Gordon Food was. Um, certainly it's, it's, it's a use that people will be coming and buying materials and supplies that they can then take back to their church or school and use for those st staffs and those employees and congregates 
or it can be sold to small grocery stores or convenience stores, and then they will also take these items and place them on their shelves. So it, in that sense, it is a wholesale facility, but it's not a wholesale facility as many of you think it. <coughs> you'll find with large semi-trucks coming in and out of the site at all times and very little pedestrian traffic. We think that there will be pedestrian traffic, and we will have uh, comments from the owner in just a few moments about that fact. So again, we feel that this rezoning is a limitation. We've given you uh, commitments that if this is approved would be tied to this property and they would not, they would be recorded and they would be enforced. And those are commitments that do not exist on the property today. Today, the C3 zoning of this property has no commitments. Anything could occur. It could be open 24 seven, it could have um, any use that is permitted in the C3 district, and there's no parameters about how that use would behave. We've given you a set of commitments about how the trash would be picked up, how the, the number of trucks that would come to the site on a daily basis. Those types of things that we think give certain restrictions that this use proposed uh, this evening is a, a modification of the C3 district, but one with uh, many, many um, restrictions. As I said, I want to point out to you, you have a revised development statement. I want to, that is also a requirement in the CS district. There are two other things besides the petition that you must file with the CS rezoning. One is a development statement and the other is a site plan. And so that's why we feel that this rezoning, if approved to CS, gives the council and the neighbors a great deal more input about how this property will develop over the coming years. <clears throat> But you can read through that development statement, the uses that would be permitted, and then the signs that would be permitted, how the parking spaces would uh, continue to exist, how the lighting, security, uh, trash collection, and deliveries would be occur at this site. So that's a key component that, that goes with this petition. So if, if approved by you, those would be in force. The next page after the development statement is a list of seven commitments about how this facility would operate. I won't repair, the, I won't read those to you, but you can see that it talks about certain upgrades to the existing property, repair of the privacy fence, so the neighbors to the west and the south have no a gap between the, the fence that is there on the property at present. The landscaping, we plan to re-landscape the frontage area, the green strip along both Franklin Road and along the side street to make it, again, update the center so it looks more reflective of how commercial properties look today. Again, we're also making commitments about the lighting. We feel that, again, this use, if permitted, given its hours of operation, will be um, not be a detriment to one of the neighbors using their backyard for a cookout on weekends or on evening hours because this uh, use will be primarily a daytime, daytime operation. And in the last page of that handout, I've given you four uses that would be excluded from this, this property. If this is permitted, none of those uses would be permitted even though they're permitted in the C3 district. I won't read through the permitted use list that I provided you on the, um, you can read that for yourself. I do want to um, relate to you that I'm going to have two other speakers or three other speakers come before you just briefly, but I do want to highlight the staff report that you have before you today. It, it does recommend denial, and although it does recommend denial, I would point out if you read that report thoroughly, uh, on the second page in the, par par in the I believe it would be the fourth paragraph down, it says, while staff could conceivably support a proposal to reuse the vacant grocery store for wholesaling with limitations. So it tells me that the staff is not saying that this is an inappropriate use for this property. It's a use that needs limitations. And we think we provided those limitations with the commitments, the excluded uses, and the plan of operation. You take those three documents together and attach them to this rezoning, we think it gives you a great deal um, of control and a protection for the neighbors, the neighbors and the community. Then the very last page of the staff report says, therefore, because the petition does not provide staff with clear limitations on the type, size, and intensity of a potential wholesale use, staff cannot support this request as filed. This plan of operation was just filed with the staff last Friday after we had met with the planning staff downtown. Um, 
I would encourage the council members, if you feel like there are additional commitments that should be considered of the list that we provide you, if you think there are additional excluded uses that you find objectionable by looking at the permitted use list, or if you feel like there are changes that need to be made to the plan of operation to make you feel more comfortable supporting this request. But again, in closing, and I'm going to ask Sharon uh, Thompson to come forward in a moment. She's a, the executive director of the commercial division of Keller Williams, um, who is representing the, the owners on this property. And she wants to speak about uh, her, her um, participation or uh, representing this property. But I do want to underscore with you that we are very receptive to any modifications that the council, or for that matter, any of the neighbors might suggest to us. And with that, I'd like to call Sharon forward. And then after Sharon, the, um, uh, our client, uh, Kamar and Kamal and um, Iqbad, uh, will come forward and they would like to speak with you also. Sharon? So Sharon and Kamal, just for the record, you have five minutes total. Five minutes total. Okay, I'm speaking fast. Thank you for having me here. My name is Sharon Thompson. I'm the director of the KW Commercial Division here in Indianapolis. I've been working in real estate for over 25 years. In this particular property, I have a very long history. I've worked with it for over three years. I've worked with it representing the Strange Brothers on the north side in 2016. I worked with it with Lexington Trust on the south side when it was had a Marsh grocery store, and then now I've worked with it to market it for Ruby and Pearl as they've been looking to sell both sides. So I have extensive <coughs> experience with this property. This property historically, can you hear me, has been offered both for lease and for sale during this time. It has been aggressively marketed online in the national databases, including CoStar, ICREX, LoopNet. It has a sign, and I've even gone to ICSC, the National Conference for International Council of shopping centers meeting with developers in person, with grocery owners, with grocery buyers, and tried very hard to bring a grocery store to town. I have not found a grocery store that wanted to come to this site. So through my marketing, I can document over 90,000 views online across the United States looking at this property that did not come for use. The best offer I've had is the, the parties that you'll see today. Um, Currently, I have no, there's over 18 vacant grocery stores in the Indianapolis market right now. The appraiser that came to look at this project said, if this project comes together, it will be the first and the only re, re, uh, renovation of a grocery store he's seen in Indianapolis in the last three years. Um, to date, there's been one grocery store that was interested three years ago. It was a Hispanic grocery store. They could never reach terms with Lexington Trust. Uh, their price was always very different. The Hispanic grocery store market no longer has the same supply chain and is not interested. I've also pursued other Hispanic grocery stores as well as other conventional ones. This property has received offers from a charter school and from a senior services group and has had many churches interested. All of them are nonprofit, so there would be no tax revenue to the town. So in my opinion, the current buyer and the local company represents the best option for the next phase of this property's life cycle. The comprehensive plan shows that this section was near where Lawrence hoped to have more trade businesses. This allows for a local business just like this one to grow. Thank you. Hello guys, um, my name is Iqbal Sadiq. Um, I'm representing SE Imports and Wholesale. Um, we're the uh, company that's uh, hoping to buy this property. Um, so just to start, I mean, we, uh, we do love Lawrence. Um, we both uh, grew up here. Um, our parents uh, still live in the home on 75th and Hague. Um, you know, we moved there in 1999, over 20 years ago. And uh, both Kamal and I um, graduated from Lawrence North, as I mentioned. Um, you know, we, we live in the greater Indianapolis area. Um, we both went to college here in the state. Uh, so our roots are here and, um, you know, we have the best interest in the, uh, in the Lawrence community. <clears throat> so we would like to grow our business here in Lawrence in this building. Uh, our current building is 27,000 square feet um, and it's on 16th and Sherman. Um, and that building we do not own. So um, by purchasing this building, we are further investing in our own business and, you know, future investment properties. 
Um, <clears throat> we are a company that supports local businesses in Lawrence and um, mom and pop businesses throughout the state of Indiana. Uh, we're unique in the sense that our, our building is not closed off to customers um, like a traditional warehouse uh, may be. Uh, we're also not like a club store, like a true club store that um, has constant traffic throughout the day that you know the neighbors might not like. So I think we're a happy medium that welcomes small business owners, local churches, um, you know, local schools that need supplies uh, for their establishment. Um, we also deliver to places that um, you know just can't make it for their convenience. So we, we try to do that as well. Um, our vision for the business is continuing to help local businesses grow. Uh, so they can prosper and in turn help their own communities um, that they're in, such as Lawrence. Um, we envision the retail center. So um, where we want to be is kind of where Marsh operated um, in the past, you know, 30, 36,000 square feet, right around that, um, you know, where Marsh uh, you know, operated there. But the other 10 to 16,000 square feet, we want to leave it as is. Um, and uh, possibly bring other tenants there. Um, I know one thing the neighborhood wants is a you know grocery store, um, you know at least a small scale grocery store. Um, we're going to try our best to bring that and make that happen. Um, so and that's something um, you know we can discuss further as we need to. But um, that is something we also want for the community if that's what it wants. It's not going to be large scale, but at least something small that um, provides the needs for the uh, local community. Um, but at the end of the day, for the retail center, um, we just we want it to be lively. Um, we want um, good tenants that complement one another uh, that's there. We hope to find tenants that service the immediate community here in Lawrence and, and that can mutually benefit both the business and the Lawrence community. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Again, we'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Okay. You guys can just get the demonstrator up. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, remonstrators have 15 minutes to present their opposition or objections. You need the list from the back, right? So first on the list, we have William Parson. You can please um, come forward. State your name and address for the record. My name is William Parson. I live at 7948 Ashton Drive. I've been there for 39 years. I've seen some good things and bad things come to this area. <coughs> and... Uh, what we had delivered to us in our mailboxes, and the gentleman said that they've had you have a three-page uh, modification to whatever. This is all we've got. We didn't get anything that was talking about modifications or anything like that. Uh, they also had what would not be allowed in here. Uh, they're talking about they wanted to put possibly housing, uh, more houses in this, but I don't know if that's been taken out or not, but um, on this, it, um, rezoning says, would provide for wholesale retail outlet multifamily dwellings. And according to what he said, he didn't mention anything about multifamily dwellings. And if that's the case, you know, if, if they're wanting to put multifamily dwellings in there, we have enough apartments around here now uh, from 42nd Street all the way to 56th and across the interstate and everything else. We do not need more housing. And if that is something that's been modified that you have a copy of that we were not privy to, 
uh, in ours, it says they could put multi-housing, and that is one thing we just do not need. Uh, like I say, I've lived here 39 years, and I've seen some good times and bad times, and the housing market is just starting to come up. And if we get more housing and apartments in here, I don't think the housing around here is going to sustain it. I mean, the properties will not rise in, in value as they have been the last few years. And he said a wholesale outlet. <clears throat> He's talking about there won't be much traffic. I don't know how he can say that. That's going to be a lot of traffic in the wholesale. Uh, you're going to have vehicles coming in or picking things up. You're going to have all day long. That traffic is going to be constant. It may not be as big as Sam's or as big as Costco, but we're going to have a lot of traffic. It's not bad if we had a retail store in there like a grocery store, and he said they're going to try to get one in. But if they haven't been able to get one in in three years, what makes them think they're going to get one in now? But what we do not need is a wholesale operation or multifamily housing. Just do not need it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam President, if I may add real quickly, I've all the Wait, paperwork uh, I Councilor read. Councilor Wells, hold one moment. We we have to we have to let the remonstrators speak first, and then I'll I'll take your. Um, I just wanted to make a point that I think they dropped the family housing in the paperwork that I read. So, so if the remonstrators are concerned about the family housing that they have dropped that. That's well, the point that I wanted to make. So hold on, we're gonna we're gonna restore order. So when the petitioner comes back up. Just be prepared to address that, okay, in the rebuttal, all right? Okay, next on, we have David Kingan. Sorry. Yes, but I wanted to make sure that you did sign, so I just want to make sure for the record that I read your name. Um, next we have, and I'm sorry, I might, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it because I don't want to get it wrong, and I'm not sure if it's an I-A. That, that's me, I already spoke. Okay. Okay, and next we have Vicki and Randy Kinsley. Would you like to come forward? You'll pass? Okay, Randy? Okay. Next we have Valerie Ellis. Hello. Hi, how are you? State your name and address for the record, please. Valerie Ellis, 4820 Atwell Drive, Indianapolis. Um, my questions are, um, I've just recently gotten some research on what it is the products are being sold, and oh, I keep hearing about wholesaling and we're giving it to churches and schools, but what is it that we're giving to them or selling to them or bringing to our community? What kind of products? I mean, I. It's just pretty vague in what they are offering to wholesale. I would just like more information on that. They talk about trucks and deliveries. How many trucks? Have they done traffic studies to talk about the amount of um, vehicles coming and going? And then they're talking about that people could come and shop there. Shop there for what? But would it be open to the public? Would it be... Um, I just would like to understand more of what they're asking with that as well. I just don't... Um, like their hours of operation, is it going to be a nine to five kind of spot? I mean, there are just a lot of questions. There's a lot of vagueness going on that I don't understand, um, like what their hours of operation are going to be and what kind of products they're going to be and how many um, vehicles are going to come in and go and what kind of staff are they going to have, how many people are going to be employed there. Um, I just would like to have more information before I could, you know, support um, a business coming in. But now that the housing is off, the table, which I didn't receive anything at my house about this going on. I just heard through the neighbor, the neighborhood. But um, that would be. I would just like something that would support the community. Um, I do like the idea of bringing taxes to our city, but not at any cost. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Thompson has already spoken, so we'll move on to John Frame. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. My name is John Frame, and I own the apartment building directly across the street from the complex that we're talking about. The name of the apartments is Franklin Apartments, and our company name is Indy Realty 
LLC. Uh, we have met with the owners of the operation that's proposing to, uh, to take this property. Uh, and I can tell you that Kamal and Igbad were very gracious to us when we went to their facility because we wanted to see what their current facility looks like. Uh, it is a wholesale type of business. We did not actually see the warehouse. It was, wasn't necessary to see that. But it's important to state for those that are listening and for the board to understand that this is a tax-exempt facility from a sales tax perspective. You must have a merchant certificate of tax exemption to purchase because these items are wholesale and are intended to then go to your convenience store and that's where the sales tax will be generated and collected. Uh, for anybody that lives in our building, um, they will not, uh, it will not benefit any of the uh, current tenants in our building. We have 44 tenants, half of which uh, look out their window every day and will see this operation from a firsthand perspective. Um, <clears throat> there was a little bit of confusion uh, in the fact that uh, on this legal notice that everybody got in their mailbox, um, it shows all of the exceptions, for example, uh, and we assume that it means no check cashing, no um, bar or tavern, no pawn shop, no wireless communication facility, and that list goes on and on. No funeral homes and this sort of thing. But recently we, re we, we received an attachment because we did also reach out to um, one of the direct, um, I don't know if he's a director, but he's with the Met uh, Department of Met Metropolitan Development. His name is Larry. I don't know if he's even here tonight or not. It's right there. Yeah, turn. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Thank you. Um, so we made made an effort to reach out to s f see from his perspective what was being proposed, and until just recently, it was a little bit vague from his perspective. Some of the things I'm sure have been cleared up by now, but most recently we received an attachment E that says the petitioner commits to exclude the following uses, and this appears to uh, be much less robust than the first list of exceptions. There's only seven of them listing an emergency shelter, a tattoo parlor, a blood center, a methadone cl clinic, a substance abuse treatment facility, a mortuary, or an adult entertainment business retail. So obviously we would welcome not having those items across the street from our buildings and in our neighborhood, but we'd like to know if the original exceptions which is a much longer list, is still going to be the rule. Uh, I did speak with Sharon, uh, and sh I totally believe that she has exhausted in her, in her field uh, every possibility for a new grocery store. Um, and the reasons cited are basically because the current floor plan of that marsh is not desirable for what would be considered a current layout for a grocery store or a general Dollar General or whatever. There's only one loading dock. Uh, it's very tight quarters back behind the building. Uh, and so it's, it's not conducive to say an Aldi's or a Dollar General or a Dollar Tree or anything like that. But I can tell you that we have um, owned the building there on Franklin Road for 40 plus years and it's since the late 50s when Marsh originally came in there. Uh, we enjoyed many, many years mm -hmm. of having um, a retail facility that benefited our, uh, cust our tenants because a lot of them are retired uh, a lot of them are without transportation. A lot of them are um, on disability and limited incomes. And once the marsh pulled out, uh, just getting weekly food supplies for them has been a challenge. And the village pantry, which will continue, I don't know if it's, it's actually a village pantry, but it is the parcel that previously was village pantry, should be noted that that is not included in this sale. And that uh, convenience store right there will continue to be a convenience store as long as they can manage. But if you lived across the street from that, 
um, we'll call it a village pantry. Uh, the, basically, the food stuffs that they sell, besides potato chips and um, beef jerky and things along those lines, are very few items would you want to make your uh, daily uh, nutritional um, supplements from the things that they have for sale in that particular building. So we're not necessarily opposed to having a, a viable tenant in this location. But our first choice, obviously, would be something that would be retail friendly that our 44 tenants could walk across the street and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Last, I have uh, Herman King. No? OK. OK. Staff comments on behalf of Department of Metropolitan Development. Uh, thank you. I'm Larry Callaway from the uh, City of Indianapolis Department of Metropolitan Development. Um, as indicated in our staff report, um, we're recommending denial. Now, the denial, um, well, staff's concerns um, initially with this petition were first um, the open-ended nature of the request um, that provide for wholesaling without any uh, definition of, of how uh, that might be limited uh, on the site or, or what type of wholesaling or um, how intense basically the wholesaling would be. And then also in general, that the, the wholesaling operation was inconsistent with the comprehensive plan which recommends uh, commercial, <clears throat> excuse me, commercial retail, which is what the site is zoned for, and which uh, um, some have mentioned what, what they would prefer to continue as such, um, um, and, and so um, you know, with the information we had, and and considering the plan recommendation, um, uh, there was no way that staff could support this uh, petition. Um, when we have a, a request that contradicts the plan, our staff has to determine if there are potential, if potential impacts of the proposed use um, have been mitigated by the details of the petition. Um, and, and in this case, we found that was, that was not the case. Now, um, and as you can see very recently, uh, August 30th, we received a a plan of operation that provided um, a little more detail and clarity about what actually was being wholesaled um, and a little more detail um, regarding limitations. Um, but of course, this coming on a, a Friday uh, before holiday and, and uh, also getting other information um, just today, um, we, uh, as a staff, did not vetting this information, discuss it, or, or um, um, and so, uh, so we can't officially change our recommendation um, uh, because it has not not been discussed. Um, however, we did, in our initial discussion, talk about the fact that we potentially could support something on this site um, if we found that the, uh, the details and limitations were, were adequate enough. Um, and at this point, like I said, I can't say whether they are or not because we've not discussed that fully as our recommendations come from the staff consensus and it's not just based on my brief look at it uh, this morning. Um, uh, I did discuss with the petitioners some of the things that they ought to uh, consider and bring it forward to, to the uh, uh, to the council, um, to uh, I, I did advise them that potentially the multifamily use that they initially proposed uh, could be problematic as well. Um, the excluded uses, as was alluded to, started out with um, a substantial number of uses, though um, uh, about half those uses actually were C4 uses. Or, you know, uh, which wouldn't have been permitted on the site um, anyway. Um, so 
they weren't really excluded uses, they were non-permitted uses anyway. Um, and then uh, those uses got narrowed down to seven, and there still were some of those uses that weren't permitted um, by the, the C3 uh, district. Um, and then this last list, I believe, which we received, indicates that um, I believe they've taken out all the potential C4 um, uses um, and left some C C3 as four C3 and uh, C1 use as an excluded use. Um, so anyway, um, we still, again, are recommending denial. Um, they have made progress in making, uh, providing limitations on the petition with respect to hours operation, um, some limitations on Truck traffic, though that's hard to um, enforce at times, limitation on, on number of employees, limitation on square footage. Um, so those, those are things that are, that are helpful um, to the petition. But at this time, um, we're still reckoning denial, and I'd be happy to answer any question you might have. Okay, councilors? Madam President? Yes, Councilor Chevrolet. Larry, I just want to make sure that it's um, clear, because uh, I'm guessing some of the people that were here that wanted to speak didn't speak because they heard now that it wasn't going to be a multifamily or an apartment. But this, is, this C3 property, if it's been vacant for longer than five years, you can then have single family, two family, triplex, fourplex, multifamily dwelling, live work, Group homes, correct? Well, if 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 uh, it can be proven that it, that it's been vacant for more than five years, they have. Oh, to, I, that's easy to prove. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I don't I don't know how long it's been vacant. I don't remember. Um, but if if they could submit that information, we have a process for reviewing that and approving that, and they have to submit certain documentation right. uh, for that. If that was the case, then. Yeah, those uses that are listed under V vacant yeah. uh, for five years could uh, be developed at this site. Okay, my, my, my last question for you, uh, you, you said that the petitioner's proposal was somewhat vague. Can you point to one or two things? Because I'm trying to follow like you with the recent submissions and changes and amendments that some mm -hmm. of the folks here probably don't have. Can you point to one or two things that stuck out from the staff report that you and your team looked at and said, doesn't fit. Well, um, again, going back to the original request, it, it, there was, it was not just what was said, it was, it was how it was said. There weren't, um, there weren't actual restrictions written into um, what they called, I guess, attachment C. Um, like it said, it said there was going to be a wholesale outlet, but there was no parameters as to what type of wholesaling or how how uh, uh, expansive that would be or, or uh, how detailed that would be. Or like, for example, under buildings, it said it just described the fact there was an existing building. It didn't say we're eliminating we're limiting, lim lim limiting it to that building. Okay. Um, it, it was those kind of things. That okay, thank you. Any other counselors? Madam President, if I, if I may, Larry, you said, um, I'm looking at the two attachment E's, uh, one filed on September 3rd and one filed on August 27th. And you said one has seven and one has four uh, commits to exclude the following uses. Uh, so, and when you said that some of these uh, that were being excluded now were C4, is that the difference in the two lists? I'm looking at uh, methadone clinic and treatment facility, substance abuse facility, treatment facility, and adult under entertainment business retail were not on new filing. Anyone? So, Councilor Hall, I did. Um speak with our council attorney about that, and it is the C4s that it's were removed C4. from the list. Okay. Right. Since it's not a C4 property. Okay. 
Yeah, in, in one part of my staff report, I, I do have those seven listed and indicate which ones were C4 um, and, and which ones weren't. And you know, the methadone, substance abuse, and adult entertainment were the C4 uses. Those, those would need to be excluded because they're not? Because they're not, they're they're not committed use. anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Any other counselors? Madam President. Councilor Parker and then Councilor Jones. I have a question, and this was actually brought to me, and maybe it's already been answered, but um, car lot. Does car lot that something can be permitted in CS use? No, they've not proposed that, but if you, if you propose a car lot, you could have that in a CS district, but they've not proposed that. I guess what I mean, if it's not one of the exclusions and someone owned this property, could they do that if it was not on... Yes. No, the only thing that the only things they can do are, are what they've asked for, which is uh, zone to CS to have C3 uses with these four exclusions now and the wholesale retail uh, outlet operation. Okay. I just want to make sure. sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam President. Yes, Councilor Jones. Mr. Calloway, I came here about a half hour early because I knew this came in late to read through it. Um, the biggest thing I saw is, is being a former on the BZA and zoning is the plan of operation. Um, as you say, it's very vague. It doesn't really tell exacts. It just tells us times of hours, employees, square footage. And the thing that was conflicting with the gentleman that was the buyers, he said people could come up there and purchase. Well, if it's wholesale, my understanding is private individual cannot purchase, correct? Yeah, wholesale, yeah. I, I, I presume when he said that, he was, <coughs> He was being non-specific in his language, and when he meant pe said people, I, I assumed he was referring to the not-for-profits and, and, and other businesses that might uh, 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 use the use, but he'd have to clarify that. But my understanding is it would be not-for-profits and, and, and businesses that would, that would use this facility. And when someone files this, does DPDW code, code enforcement come out and look at these as well? No. Uh, that thing? As I look at this, I mean, I can clearly see why it's probably been vacant three years. I mean, there's graffiti, there's several code violations, trees overgrown, painting on the back, vehicles have been parked there for days. So, you know, the, the code enforcement would only look at it if there was a complaint filed, then they would come out. They, they typically don't do uh, proactive uh, inspections. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other counselors? Madam President, if I Yes, Councilor Wells. Uh, Mr. Calloway, this uh, property is in the district that I represent, and I have had a number of my constituents call me and inquire um, about what this all entailed. And like you said, and like the gentleman said earlier, the information was, in my opinion, extremely vague. It was, uh, uh, it listed uh, pretty much everything that wasn't going to happen but it didn't really say anything as to what exactly they were going to do. Um, I see this plan of operations dated uh, August 30th uh, with you all stamp on it. You know, I just got this at four o'clock this afternoon. And, uh, uh, you know, I, we don't sit in on a lot of these uh, zoning changes, but, right. and I understand you probably do a lot of them. Is it normal for, this type of information to fall into your hands or into a council's hands this late? I wouldn't say it's, it's abnormal. It's not helpful for the decision makers to get information. I agree. Right. Um, but um, it, it's not helpful for anybody. But um, yeah, I, I was off Friday, so I didn't see this until uh, till th this morning uh, laying on my desk. Um, and and then, the, then another thing got filed um, actually today, so. Um, so the, yeah, it doesn't give you time to digest it. And like I said, there's no opportunity for our staff to discuss it. So that's well, I felt a little empty, you know, with the, my constituents asking me, and I thought, you know, I, all I can do is read you what was sent to us and what's sent to us doesn't really define anything as what they're planning to do. Uh, and this may be more of a question for Sharon, uh, but maybe you might know Mr. Calloway, but my research has shown, uh, that this area or this where this Mars store used to be could in fact uh, meet the qualifications for a food desert. And now, especially since the uh, 
uh, Walmart grocery store has closed its doors, it more than enhances it. And I guess uh, Sharon says she has met with uh, uh, grocery stores or talked to grocery stores. My question is, has anybody met with the administration because it takes the administration to make the applications for this property to be a food desert. So maybe that would incite uh, other grocers to come in here for whatever qualifications and, the, and then they would get the uh, tax credits or whatever you know they would get for coming into a food desert. I guess that's my concern that uh, uh, has that fully been explored yet because you know, we've talked about food deserts. I've talked about it in council meetings a number of times, but I've not yet to hear anything from the administration on it. So, I mean, do, do you know or? or no, yeah, I, I don't have any awareness of what's transpired with, with that in this area particularly. So I think when the uh, petitioner comes up during rebuttal, if they can answer that question, they can do Great. it at that time. Um, so that we're staying on task, we do have a, a council meeting in 13 minutes. I'm going to call up the petitioner who has five minutes for rebuttal and for closing statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again very much. Uh, I do want to dispel some of the concerns that were raised by the council members or some of the uh, speakers that came before us. I do want to say that as an urban planner, Oftentimes when we're taking a petition, we try to reach out to a local neighborhood organization to work with them very early on in the process. We found no neighborhood organization formalized to the east or to the west or the south of us. So we had to really rely on the notices that were sent out. And we did receive several, I think four or five inquiries by email and we responded to all those people, providing them the same information that you're asking or that you were provided this, e this evening, the plan of operation, the commitments. We would have been glad to exchange emails with any of these other individuals that ha had concerns that came before you this evening. But Mr. Frame was nice enough to reach out. We responded to him. Uh, uh, Mr. Tremaine re uh, reached out several times by email. We responded to him. Uh, Kevin Spangler did also and a Ella McCain. Those were four residents that lived to the south or, or west of our, our property. And we, again, responded every time with any questions they m might have or any concerns they might have. The only reason that we considered multifamily at one time is you can well imagine if this operation takes place, it's not going to need all the parking, all the, that sea of asphalt that's out in front of this building has really very little use for <clears throat> the type of use that we're proposing or the uh, full, using the full square footage of the uh, retail center to the north. So it was a thought that perhaps multifamily might be a logical use out at the front of the property. That has been dismissed. It has been taken off. It is no longer part of the uh, intended uses or desired uses. And so that we would have to come back before this council if we, if we ever found a developer who wanted to place any multifamily on the property. The um, excluded use list, I, again, I'll make the offer again to the council or to any of the neighbors if they want to identify uses that are listed on that C3 list that they feel uncomfortable with being on this property, I'm sure our clients would evaluate. Or if there are additional commitments that you feel we've not addressed or any revisions to the plan of operation that you feel need to be improved or made more clear, we would be glad to entertain those um, requests. But we feel like what we have submitted to you this evening is um, does give the neighbors in uh, the city of Lawrence and for that matter, code enforcement protection over uh, monitoring the uh, this property. Um, again, uh, I'm going to have Sharon come forward to be able to answer any questions, but uh, we hope with the submission that you had before you this evening, gives you a comfort level to recommend approval for this, this petition and let it move forward. If you want us to meet with the neighbors that have appeared this evening, we'll be glad to do that before this evening and the next date of when this hearing would be heard if indeed it is recommended for approval this evening. Sharon, do you want to come forward? Thank you. 
Good question about the food desert. I had one pr prospect that toured three times that had a business that had done a food business in a 5,000 square foot box who had some strong political connections and he was looking at this to get support for a food desert. But this is an older building and so he was going to get like a quarter of a million for funding and a quarter of a million does not help you buy a $1.2 million building and retrofit it and then the trend towards most uh, food deserts you're in, a highly uh, uh, challenged maybe economic area, so you wanna make it, the food as affordable as possible. You lower your overhead, so you want a much smaller box, you want smaller overhead, because that reduces your cost and you pass that on to your consumer. So this is a large, old style grocery store. It's more similar to industrial or warehouse uses. So it, it was a very, very hard fit. I believe he made a choice someplace else in Indianapolis, but this one was in his top three. At one point it was in his top five, but it never had the support from even his consultants he worked with. Any other questions? I'm sorry. Councilor Jones, Councilor Jones. Okay, <clears throat> I actually have a couple questions <clears throat> um, just to make sure that I have clarity. Um, with as far as the you said that there are 13, I believe you mentioned 13 um, grocery stores here in Marion County or here in Indianapolis that are for sale and have none of them been for sale, is that correct? 18, I mean, 18 that are currently vacant is the conservative estimate. I can actually show you a couple reports that would say it's greater. Right, and wouldn't you imagine that out of those 18 that are closed, those are all food desert areas as well? N not all, but several. But several, okay. But several. The other question I had is would the, the owners of the building have an opportunity to uh, answer a few questions? Yes. I wanted to, oh, sorry. Sir, uh, please state your name and your address for the record. Uh, yes, my name is Jeff Nguyen. And my address is 6462 Kentstone Drive, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46268. Okay, and were you sworn in? Um, I'm sorry? Did you stand up and, and were you sworn in? No, I did not because I did not sign on the paper. That's okay. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right ahead, sir. I don't want to step up. I just, a couple questions I had. know people were concerned about traffic um, and that flow. So I, I wanted to know, um, do you know about how many folks come to visit your, your place of business a day? Uh, I, think, I think it's not, it seems the current owners of the building were trying to buy it. Oh, no, I want to talk to the folks trying to buy it. Yeah. Oh, buy it. I, got a, I got a question for the current Oh, okay. You have a question for the current owner, Councillor Jones? If I could, please. Please, go ahead. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to sell this, why don't you clean it up? I mean, you got several code violations. You got graffiti. You got trees that need trimmed. I mean, if I came over there and I had a restaurant, I mean, a, a grocery store, and I saw your place, I probably wouldn't buy it either. We did paint the, uh, the back wall cover a lot of the graffiti um, about two weeks ago after, uh, so we did a lot of uh, improve, uh, cleaning. We, um, we did uh, painted the wall to cover the graffiti. We did a graffiti thing, how long ago was that? Uh, it was over a year ago. Th these are the same things that were there. Um, I personally did painted the wall, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, uh, okay, guys, we got about 60 seconds. I know, yeah, and I'm sorry, Council. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Madam President. I just wanted to know, there's a concern about traffic, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to know how many folks do you have come in to visit you, mm -hmm. and how many deliveries do you have on a daily and weekly basis? Well, I, I think there was an amendment that stated that um, we average about seven or so delivery trucks a day at maximum. Um, and that's, you know, sometimes they're small box trucks, you know, we, we will have a couple of semis here and there, but, you know, they'll just go into the dock and, and deliver there. 
um, so we don't get you know a crazy amount. And then the people that are picking up, like store owners, um, you, you know, or managers, things like that, they'll pick up from our stores that have an account with us. Um, you know, they'll just come through the front door. It's just a normal car that they would come in, or an SUV um, that they would you know put into their truck and take. How many of those folks do you see a day? Um, the regular customers, I would say about. Right now, about 15 to 20 customers. Okay. So it's not like a heavy in and out traffic. So a grocery store, retail grocery store, had more folks coming in and out of it than your business. A lot more. Also, to a retail grocery store would also have deliveries, the milk man, the bread man, the Coke man, and all those folks. Well, so that's what I wanted to make sure that the constituents would see that I don't know that you would add any more traffic to Franklin Road than if we did get a Save-A-Lot or Aldi's, if we were blessed with that. Uh, I rest. Uh, I would, uh, we uh, see ourselves a lot lighter duty when it comes to traffic and when it comes to um, people coming in and out. Even, I think we put restrictions on when the garbage can be picked up. Um, you know, I think uh, someone was saying that, you know, so at some of these establishments, a grocery store, at 4 a.m., you'll have a truck backing up and collecting trash and they'll wake up the neighbors and, so, you know, things like that. We have restrictions that we put, I believe, from 8 a.m. to uh, 7 p.m., so it does not bother anybody while they're sleeping um, or um, just, you know, on a daily thing. So, um, you know, we, we try to be conscious about all those things that we restricted our um, hours of operations when our delivery trucks didn't come in as well. Uh, when we're there from uh, 7 to 6, 7 to 7, right around that time, um, I believe there's an exact time there on the amendment there. So we are trying to restrict it. We are careful of the neighbors. Um, and, and like I said, I think we're going to be a lot lighter duty when it comes to traffic flow than a existing grocery store um, is. Madam, Madam President. Is okay, Counsel sure. Councilor Hall has the last question. Oh. Is there is there an opportunity? I know we have a lot, a lot of questions, a lot more questions as a council for this this particular petition. Is there an opportunity to continue this or to to do something? We have a we have a hard stop coming up. Is there another way that we can? Revisit this. We have to rule on it. Mr. Cowley, correct me if I'm wrong, but if this council doesn't make a recommendation tonight, Indianapolis will move forward with their normal procedure without the benefit of this council recommendation on the matter. So unfortunately, it's not within our control. The petitioner can appeal with making some of these amendment changes like that. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Um, next, the remonstrator has five minutes for a rebuttal and for closing statement. Remonstrators, so those who are against, if you would like, you can come forward. If you just like to make a closing statement, you can do so at this time. Name and address, please, for the record. William Parson. Uh, trying to make a decision tonight with just the limited amount of uh, stuff we have is, is I don't, it's crazy trying to make a decision tonight. I think we need to have another meeting. Yeah. This, you know, you say, well, we got to make a decision. If we don't make a decision, then it goes to Indianapolis. I mean, with yeah, all so, the changes that we never got to look at. Yeah, so legally that's the process. We would love to have more time to look at it, but unfortunately as a council, we don't have that opportunity legally. So if we don't rule on this tonight as council attorney um, or make the recommendation uh, for or against tonight, then basically we we have no input and it just goes downtown to Indianapolis to make the decision. So unfortunately, we feel about the same way you do, sir. We wish we had more time, but unfortunately we don't. This can't be continued, huh? Can you tell mm -hmm. them though that we're not the final say? They know that. The recommendation? Yeah, so we make the recommendation only. The decision, so for those of you who are adamant remonstrators who have signed up tonight, um, Downtown Indianapolis is the one that makes the decision. We just make a recommendation. We don't make the decision. So it's important that um, if you feel really strongly about it, that you show up down there because that's where the decision is made. Call your city county council. Will we get a no notification or not? It's already noticed, didn't it? Madam President. I believe it's already noticed. Isn't it already noticed? Madam President. 
Okay, what's the date, sir? Okay. Thank you, sir. Also, that, that hearing could be continued also. Right. Madam President, for clarification, can I ask one question? Sorry. Okay. Mr. Callaway, it does take one remonstrator to fill out the paperwork to send it downtown, though, is my understanding. Yeah, anyone can appeal. Anyone if can no appeal one appeals, the case. it goes by the city of Lawrence. Yeah, you just have to do it within within a week of the of this decision and you can so there's Ron Strays have one week to file an appeal with downtown and it'll go downtown if you don't like the decision here thank you mm. okay any other closing statements from the remonstrators I'm forward sir sir did you sign the sheet in the back okay so can you state your name and your address for the record uh, yes, ma'am. Irvin Malman, 7947 Ashton Drive. And spell your last name, sir. M-O-E-L-L-M-A-N. Thank you. What was your first name? Irvin, I-R-V-I-N. Right ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, again, we were, we didn't have the whole ball of wax until just now, and even then we don't have what you have. But uh, <clears throat> all I can say is, we need retail, okay? And we do, our company does commercial mowing. And one of the places that we do is at 25th and Keystone and in that industrial park, Restaurant Depot. And it's very, it sounds very similar to what these gentlemen are proposing, okay? And the same thing, it started out small and just, you know, and over the years it is just boom. And, you know, it's, again, it's a lot of traffic, a lot of trucks, but it's small and small and small, but there's so much of it that it just, you know, so what they're proposing right now, a few trucks and a few this and that, that's the same way that it happened in this, uh, the mowing that we do at this restaurant depot in there, 25th and Keystone in that industrial park. And again, it gets, we go in there to mow, and it gets times where, again, it, you know, they just get, we get moved to the side, please. And, you know, and again, what I'm saying is I think everybody in this room feels that we need retail in the, this spot. And just like, okay, what these gentlemen are saying is, well, we may branch out, and we may go into retail. But I, and I can tell you, again, from experience that we're experiencing down there, I mean, it is not, there's no, you know, nobody's going to walk into that establishment down there and buy 10 bananas. They can buy 10 crates of bananas, but as an individual, they're not going to walk in and buy bananas, okay? And so, again, is all I'm trying to say is the plan that I heard tonight you know, it's, I know what it is down there and what these gentlemen are proposing, they're gonna keep it real small, but it's still gonna be a warehouse, period. It's gonna be a warehouse. It's not gonna be a retail store, what we, everyone needs in this room. You know, it's going to be a warehouse, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, counselors, you have your ballot in front of you. If you could go ahead and make your recommendation. Yeah, if, he's, if I can't read your signature print. Eight votes were cast, six to deny, and two to grant. We're adjourned.